Hello there, booktube. This is Christy Lewis from Dusty of Ski in Space. Today I am doing my first tag in like a real long time. This is the mid-year booktube freakout tag. I don't know who created this. I should have looked it up. I apologize. I'll put their channel name here if I can find it. So a lot of these questions have to do with fiction, which I feel like I haven't been reading or at least enjoying as much fiction this year. So I'm just gonna do my best to answer these, but I wanted to do them because there are some really good questions in here and it's like a good midpoint. And I also, I don't think I did best books of 2021. I was just having a hard time earlier this year with my health and I couldn't get around to filming it and uploading it. I'm going to do my tags ahead of time so I don't forget. I'm just going to tag all of my Fostathon co-hosts. Fostathon is coming up in August. Just so you know, we're going to be reading some Fost legends and everybody can kind of read whichever one they want and it's going to be a really good time. One of my co-hosts at least has already done this tag, but I don't think the rest have and I don't know if they want to, but I'm tagging them. So do whatever you want, guys. Jenny from Jennifer Brooks has done it, but Rainy normally does vlogs and has been in a reading slump and hasn't done tags in a long time from what I can see. So. But I'm going to tag Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. I'm going to tag Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf, who has so many good ideas. I don't even know if she does tags, but she just has a lot of good ideas about videos. So she probably doesn't even have time for tags. She's just like full of good ideas, but I'm tagging her anyways. And then we have Pei from Attention, who I'm hoping that we get a YouTube comeback from. <laughs> First question is best book you've read so far in 2022. And that is going to be The Idiot, of course, by Fyodor Dostoevsky. There were a few other books that I could have said for this, but I really loved this book. It's like an all time favorite. Question two, best sequel you've read so far in 2022. I don't think I've read any sequels. I don't really read sequels because I don't really read series that much. I'm sort of in the middle of Claw of the Conciliator actually but I haven't finished it, so it probably doesn't count. <laughs> Question three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I'm excited about several new releases actually, which I f feels unusual for me, but I've just had a bunch of them recommended to me or found them lately. One is Powers and Thrones by Dan Jones, which is a new history of the Middle Ages. I found out about it through my library job. <laughs> the library bought it and I was like, that sounds really interesting, but I want to finish a history of Korea and a people's tragedy on Russia first. So we'll see what happens there. And if I would just listen to a people's tragedy, I mean, I'm sure that I could get farther faster with nonfiction, but I really want to annotate it and I want it to really stick in my brain. I want to remember the arguments of the author and be able to compare them to other arguments of other authors. I'm very intrigued by the idea of immersion learning right now because that's how I'm learning Korean. There is a lot of dedicated time that I spend with a notebook writing vocabulary down and studying grammar and stuff like that. But I'm also, whenever I'm listening to Korean music or watching Korean dramas or vlogs or whatever, I'm also picking things up very more easily than I have previously when I was trying to learn languages. So I think I would probably learn a lot of nonfiction just by listening to it. However, maybe better for review for now because I need to kind of set some parameters in my head. I was never very good at remembering history and some of it I honestly just skipped when I was younger in school. So I feel like I can't quite do that yet with history. <laughs> and the other two that I can think of right now are fantasies. So The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, which is inspired by 1001 Nights and there's a magical lamp in it. And it was recommended to me very highly from Stephanie from Miss Richard Reads, who I just think her taste is excellent. So I have to try this one. And All the Seas of the World was recommended to me by Jennifer Brooks. She mentioned that religion is portrayed with a lot of complexity in here, which is something that I really love in fantasies. And she said that Guy Gavriel K is one of her favorite fantasy authors now, and I've actually been wanting to read him for a very long time. So that is definitely on my list. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I don't think I have any yet. I'm trying specifically not to browse NetGalley right now because I I am behind on my arcs and I am ashamed about that. And I just generally don't watch a lot of YouTube that's about new releases. So I just don't run across a lot of things that I love. <laughs> biggest disappointment is question five. Uh, Dr. Zhivago is my biggest disappointment. Although Letters and Papers from Prison was also pretty disappointing. Dr. Zhivago was really just very hard to read stylistically for me. And Ursula from Ursula's Odds and this. She told me that actually it's obvious that he's more of a poet than a novelist. It had some honors like the Nobel Peace Prize and you know stuff like that that I thought oh yeah that's gonna be good and people love the movie and yeah I just 
thought I would like it more. And every literally all of the co-hosts for the read-along we were doing began after this book, which was such a shame. I haven't been having as much luck with Russian literature as I was before. I think Dostoevsky is just my favorite, and I happened to read the best Tolstoy right off the bat, which was the death of Ivan Illich. <laughs> and then Letters and Papers from Prison, there was a lot of kind of like non-essential things in it. The most essential things were not really well developed. That's it. Number six, biggest surprise. Memoirs are like my newest favorite thing. I can listen to them and get that immersion learning experience um, because I'm just following one person's story. It's not hard to follow. And you can learn about kind of what's going on in a period sometimes from somebody's life perspective without worrying too much on all the detail that I'm missing out of, I think that's a really good way for me to learn. So The Girl with Seven Names, All Creatures Great and Small, Voices from Chernobyl, Lessons from the Edge, and right now Life in Motion by Misty Copeland and The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. Not all of these are things that you will learn much about the period from, but they are just fun. I just really love hearing about somebody's life. And then also 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami really surprised me as well earlier this year. I still can't forget it. <laughs> I still think I will enjoy more Haruki Murakami work once I am able to read from the very, very male gaze heavy perspective that he writes from. I think if I can get past that, which is a difficulty right now, I just can't right now. I really love his writing style other than that. And I think his story was very interesting. A new favorite author, debut or new to you. I'm gonna go with Joseph Conrad for this because I would love to drop everything in Read Lord Jim. Maybe I should, but I absolutely adored The Secret Agent earlier this year. The Heart of Darkness also has always captured my imagination. So I'm looking forward to reading more from him. Question eight, newest fictional crush, probably Prince Mishkin from The Idiot. He just has my whole heart. <laughs> Only Dostoevsky seems able to write those kind of characters for me right now where it's just like, I love you. But really, I'm not even sure if I have room for fictional crushes from fiction, like books, because I have so many like biases. We call it bias in the Korean media world when you have a favorite. I have so many Korean biases now from different K-pop groups or different shows, like, wow. I haven't been allocating a lot of time to discovery lately in those areas. I've been kind of hunkering down and getting to know my favorites a little bit better. So lately I've been really enjoying Left and Right by Jungkook and Charlie Puth. But Jungkook really, he's not a new bias. He's like the oldest bias I have in Korean media. So I'll just share a Korean media thing that I've been loving and then a nerd thing that I've been loving. Hopefully that works for you guys. So. With Korean media, I've been really obsessed with Blackpink's Playing With Fire. My love is on fire. Lisa just has my favorite raps in that song. And then Jisoo's So don't play with me, boy. It's just, I'm singing it like all the time. I can't stop. And then Lemonade. Lemonade. By NCT. I can't get it out of my head. But really, probably the bias that won't leave me alone the most right now is Hong Joon from ATs. <laughs> this song this, that they do called Say My Name. I just can't stop listening to it all the time. Their whole crew, I mean, Hong Joon has so much stage presence, it's incredible, but really their whole crew is just like, thanks. I'll just watch this for the rest of my life. That's all I need to watch. So as far as my nerd bias, I've been really loving Sharon McMahon lately because I've just been swept up into politics this week and I, I wasn't into politics for a really long time. I just haven't been paying too much attention because they're kind of stressful. Like current events are stressful. But I really love her Instagram and her podcast because she doesn't really offer much analysis or commentary. She's just mostly answering questions. So she is a government teacher or at least that's what her background is. So basically that's what she does. She just like teaches you what government can and can't do and answers basic questions and then kind of talks about what the Supreme Court has just decided and what exactly that means. She'll offer like a little bit of opinion and commentary, but for the most part, that's not what she does. And I appreciate that because I don't, I don't want people's opinion and commentary. <laughs> I just want to know like the basic facts that I 
need to know. I don't want to know everything. There's too much out there to talk about. And I just don't care that much. She's a just the facts kind of girl. And she also will show like other really cool stuff sometimes. The other day she was talking about a librarian who is creating a book vending machine for kids who have book deserts who can't get to a library because their parents won't take them there or whatever. They could still have free books because she is setting up a free book vending machine for kids. She just needs to find a, like a place to put it in the Baltimore area. And she also just recently showed, she showed this account that has like 40 analysts working on the task of rating the biases of different news sources, which is so cool. So they'll have a chart from like very far leaning left and then very far leaning right and then kind of where people are on the spectrum, different news sources. They also rate every, I think it's every month or every week, they will specifically talk about one source and kind of rate all of their recent work and where it falls on the spectrum. It's just so cool. It's so cool. That was a long answer to the question. Number nine, newest favorite character. So this isn't new, but I've been rewatching my favorite K-drama, The Tale of the Nine-Tailed, which I found, I think, in like 2020. <laughs> and I just really love the main character. She's so awesome. She's like super smart and she's a very driven female cop, very family oriented. If she has her loved ones, she has the world but she's also like never fooled ever. It's so incredible. Number 10, books that made you cry. Uh, again, I think K-drama is sort of hitting the feels for me more lately because like nothing has touched my emotions as much as Hotel de Luna. I cried so much watching that. It's about like these ghosts who are going through this hotel that leads them to the afterlife. And so they have to get ready for that. They have to let go of their loved ones and their grudges lest they become evil ghosts. And it's just sad, but also like so good. It's such a good metaphor for death and like grief and all the things that you go through when someone you love dies. It's, it's a really incredible K-drama, highly recommend. But The Girl with Seven Names, I believe, did make me cry, as well as The Secret Agent and The Idiot. I think all three of those made me cry. Number 11, a book that made you happy. Uh, my Korean textbooks all make me so happy. Like, I seriously just love working on languages, but especially Korean right now, because that's what I'm doing. I really love it. It makes me very happy. But also The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford is making me laugh all the time, as is A Bad Business Essential Stories by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Number 12, most beautiful book you've bought this year so far or received. I Probably one of my Korean books, I guess. I don't really buy that many books. I really just use the library. But I have this cookbook out right now. I wish that I could hold it up for you guys. It's incredible. It's beautiful. What book do you still need? And A Bad Business is really cool too. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I need to read like three versions of Foss for Fostathon, which is coming up, and also Demons by Dostoevsky. And I would love to finish one of my country study books, the Korean one or the Russian one, and my Korean level two grammar books. That's the plan. Thank you so much for watching this, guys. I hope that you enjoyed my first tag in a while. Let me know down below, do you have a favorite book so far this year? Thanks so much, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye -bye.